Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and specifically, welcome to a series of videos that I plan to make on must-have vehicles in the game. Today, we're going to be looking at the Tier 6, Brit Brit Tier 6 British Medium Tank. It is the Cromwell. Now, there are two versions of the Cromwell inside the game. There is the standard Cromwell, which you'll find inside the tech tree, and then there is the Cromwell Berlin, a premium version of this tank. Now, the Cromwell Berlin is actually one of the best purchases, in my opinion, you can make in the entire game because you get a zero-skill brothers-in-arms crew with the tank's purchase as well. At least, unless Wargaming do some kind of weird tomfoolery to try and sell it without having the special crew. And that brothers-in-arms crew just allows you to accelerate your progress. You can whack them in, well, keep them in the Cromwell if you want to, or you can go and put them in something like a Centurion Action Tent and then just drive around in your Cromwell Berlin like it is the bee's knees. So, the Cromwell, why is it so special? Well, it went into the game in 2012, and even though I don't think it's been buffed at all since October 2012, here we are. Is that 12 years later? No way. What? What is my life? Where is my life going? Uh, definitely into a game and making some uh, at least reasonable content on it, at least occasionally, maybe like one video a year. Uh, I digress. I'm having a midlife crisis moment here while I'm meant to be talking about some of the must-have vehicles inside the game. Look. The fact that the Cromwell hasn't been buffed, at least in my in my memory, in 12 years, yet it's still so competitive in the meta in 2024, just really shows how much of a wonderful vehicle this is. It has amazing damage per minute, nearly 2,100 damage per minute base, which allows you to go all in against your opponents, or play like a support role, wait until the heavy engages, get the flanking position, and be able to go after them. It also has fairly decent standard pen, of 145 and the gold pen is 202 on this tank which means that when you do get those pesky tier 8 matchups then you load a few gold rounds to hit those real hard nut to cracks and or nuts to crack even probably rather than nut to cracks yeah yeah uh i i digress for the second time in this video but like the cromwell just an absolute beast of a vehicle with high damage per minute it's also got amazing mobility 64 kilometers an hour forwards an incredible power to weight ratio of nearly 25 it's more like a light tank within that regard incredible traverse speed as well we're turning base traverse speed of over 50 degrees a second so you can be able to turn your entire tank more like it's a, a light vehicle within that regard you've also got i believe seven and a half degrees of gun depression I think, or 8 degrees if we're being pedantic. I think it might be 7.5 that's actually getting rounded, or maybe Wargaming actually changed that over the years. And it's got enough view range. 360 base means that if you whack coated optics on this vehicle, and you've got a reasonably good crew, then you will be spotting your opponents at decent distances. You'll see that I'm using a build where I'm displaying or unpacking uh, vents and exhaust and coated optics. This is for when I want to be a bit more of a, a sneaky tank. And it's not going to be quite as good as having a gun rammer on a Cromwell and really going for that rate of fire. But what this exhaust does is it allows you to play more like a light tank. And I felt like on this map, considering that there weren't many light tanks in this game, that I thought that I could make my way to the bush. I'll probably have better camera rating with an exhaust than those light tanks will to do on the move. And I'll definitely have better view range than they will if I've got a decent crew. And then I can get the vision going. And then once I see an opportunity to commit, then I can jump in and we are still a very deadly vehicle. And just like that, we've transitioned from being a passive scout, although you can play active scout in a crumble, especially with a build like this, to now being the all-in damage dealer. And even without a gun rammer, oh, this thing just feels brutal once you get going. I would thoroughly recommend investing in something like Deadeye on your gunner on this vehicle, because the amount of penetrations that you make with a fairly low 135 alpha, to be fair, are staggering and once you get lots of penetrations you can get lots of crits i actually used the cromwell berlin to do one of the hardest missions in the history of world of tanks and that was incinerator uh, which was medium tank 12 i think it's still medium tank 12. an incinerator back in the day was harder than it is now for the object 260 you had to set tanks that were higher tier than your vehicle on fire twice in a battle so you know, in a game like this, it'd be impossible because there's no higher tier tanks. Now, I actually fudged the matchmaker to be able to achieve that. I signed up in a platoon with E25s, and E25s would mean that there were always tier 7 tanks on the enemy team because they had preferential matchmaking, never tier 9s. And eventually, I set, I think it was a 
T-28 or a T-28 prototype on fire twice by aiming for the fuel tanks. And had possibly one of my uh, greatest freakouts in, in World of Tanks history, which I'm sure that you can find. I think I actually managed to smash my keyboard so hard in, in, in like, happiness rather than sadness that I think I managed to press Alt and Enter and change the resolution as well as knock a few keys off my keyboard. I think you can <laughs> see how much it meant to me. But that is how good the Cromwell is. Not only is it able to do great scouting, not only is it able to be this frenetic, all-in, fast-paced, wonderful, aggressive medium tank, it can also do some of the hardest missions in the game for you. Uh, Incinerator now, way easier than it was back then, because I believe the vehicles don't have to be higher tier than you. That you set on fire, which means that you have lots of opportunities rather than a few on the enemy team. All right, so it's just the perfect game for the Cromwell, really. We've set up vision. We've dominated an area of the map purely with our scouting prowess. And then we transitioned to be an all-in damage dealer. And you can see that if you're a little bit sneaky like this, you can get into positions where you can use that damage per minute. And it doesn't matter if they're Soviet and they've got better armor and they've got a higher alpha damage than you if they can't see you. So you can be extra sneaky in a tank like this just as well as you can be all in and crazy. My second build on this vehicle, I will drop the exhaust to use a gun rammer, and I might even be so inclined to drop the coated optics to use a rotation device and then use that on those close quarters maps. As this vehicle, it doesn't have the best gun handling when moving, when turning, or even when turning the turret. So, the Cromwell, or the Cromwell Berlin, must have tank inside the game. Really, everybody should get themselves a Cromwell. It's just one of the absolute glorious vehicles of World of Tanks. We've managed to destroy just under half of the enemy team now, and we're going for our Radley Walters medal at the end. Will we be able to get the extra shot in against the Bishop? And oh dear, Market 2014 in their Grilla snatches the Radley, but that was 4,000 combined. Not the greatest game in the Cromwell, but a fast, frenetic fight. Just showing you what a beast this vehicle is and inside a nice matchup it feels crazy strong but inside a bad matchup it can still be a very brutal support tank or whack the exhaust on and be a fairly proficient scout so our third mark of excellence here in the cromwell i don't usually play this one that much once i've got a cromwell berlin uh we've got a tank sniper for dealing lots of damage at long range a high caliber for that 2600 damage dealt and a top gun for destroying just under half of the enemy team. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was the first in a series of videos I plan to make about must-have tanks inside the game. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments whether you love the Cromwell or did you try it and you didn't enjoy it. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Friday, World of Tanks just turned 13, at least in Europe. And Wargaming is celebrating by bringing out a whole new cupcake token store so come along right now and in a single stream you'll be able to get enough to get a day of premium or continue to save up your tokens on monday and friday to be able to get a whole host of 3d styles such as the one for the Kranvang with literally a crane on the back a hellhound style for your t57 heavy the Carnarvon action 10 the super pershing or even a 3d scar style for your skoda t27 and also it's an absolute mega patch today i'm going to be playing all of the new polish tank destroyers over the weekend so come kick back and relax and let's have a few good games and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon